ahead of myself because I wanted to call out those of you who were around the Claiborne County area yesterday morning. You probably heard a loud boom and you thought, what is going on? Well, the word is out and apparently there was some kind of fireball or something like that. So we've got Dr. Bill Cook with NASA's Meteoroid and Environment's office today to tell us a little bit more about what happened. So welcome, Dr. Cook. Hi, good to be here. I am so excited. I'm a little bit of a space nerd, but not enough of a junkie to really know what I'm talking about. That's why I connect with the experts at NASA and Center Space Center on our Mississippi Gulf Coast. So what happened Wednesday? Well, uh, Wednesday morning about 8.03 a.m. local time, a piece of an asteroid about a foot across and weighing about oh, 90 pounds or so, entered Earth's atmosphere over southwest Mississippi. It was moving about 55,000 miles per hour, and it got down to an altitude of about 35 miles where it broke apart. And when it broke apart, it unleashed an energy equivalent to about three tons of dynamite. And that I guess we could call it an explosion, produced shock waves that traveled to the ground, which all these people heard as booms, and it rattled some houses. So that, in a nutshell, is what happened over southwest Mississippi yesterday. The end point of the fireball was just across the river from Natchez, Mississippi, um, in some swamps north of a little town called... uh, in Louisiana called Minorca, I think I'm pronouncing it right. All right, Dr. Cook. So I'm thinking asteroid, now I'm going to straight like Armageddon, all of the world ending kind of movies. And then I'm trying to wrap my head around something that weighs 90 pounds, which is like the size of my dog, could make this kind of sound and impact. So help us break it down. Is this normal or does it happen more often than we think? Or is this just a complete, you know, phenomenon that doesn't happen all the time? Yeah. So, uh, It all has to do with energy, to answer the first part of your question. It all has to do with the energy. Your dog may weigh 90 pounds, but he or she is not moving at 55,000 miles per hour. Fair, fair. So if you move that fast, you have a lot of energy. And if you unleash that energy, it can generate, uh, you know, all sorts of effects. Um, You know, in this case, it was relatively minor. You had a shock wave that, you know, created a noise, noises people heard, and also rattled some houses. As far as how often this occurs, things like this occur somewhere on the planet a few times per day. So on Earth, it's not that unusual. But for southwest Mississippi, you guys can go for decades without experiencing one of these events. So... In terms of southwest Mississippi, it's a pretty rare event. Well, it got us all excited, Dr. Cook. I mean, Facebook went nuts over it. I think there was calls to the Mississippi Emergency Management. So even though we haven't seen them in years, is there? it feels like there's more um, events, whether it's tornadoes, weather events, and now space events. Is this something that would be a string of them coming along, or is this just still kind of... It may be 10 years or more before Mississippi sees another one. It's it's normal. Uh, what's happening is people notice these things more, and they're able to report them. I mean, 20 years ago, we didn't have smartphones that we could report these things with, right? So, you know, you might call the sheriff's department or somebody, but it was kind of lost. Nowadays, because we're better at, you know, we've got all this technology and communications, you hear about them more often. But if you look at the data, they're happening about at the same rate they happened 20 years ago. It's just people notice them and report them a lot more. Definitely so. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad to know 
that the Aerosmith song won't be playing and we won't have like the end of the world like you see in Armageddon, the movie. I think, you know, you know, we have Hollywood always takes our minds to the extreme in any kind of event. And when you see something like a fireball, you immediately go to worst case scenario. But every day, Dr. Cook, you work at the Meteoroid Environments Office there at the Marshall Space Flight Center. What kind of cool work do you get to do on the regular? Well, our primary job is to protect spacecraft and astronauts from meteoroids out in space. Like in the case of Southwest Mississippi, you guys had the Earth's atmosphere to break this thing up before it hit ground. Out in space, there is no atmosphere. So our job is to do things like come up with models that help designers place meteoroid shields over fuel tanks and other vulnerable things, generate meteor shower forecasts so we don't send the astronauts outside on EVA in the middle of a meteor shower. And we also keep an eye on objects that enter Earth's atmosphere because, you know, it's very, very rare, but houses have been hit. You know, car windshields have been penetrated in Georgia several years ago. A mailbox got taken out by a meteorite. So we kind of keep an eye on it. We can't give you much warning. From the time a meteor hits the top of the atmosphere until it falls to the ground is like a minute. So you're not going to have warning. Now, with the big rocks of doom, like the asteroids that can end civilization, you'll have years, if not decades, of warning. But for these little bitty things that are too small to see in telescopes, we only know about them when they hit the top of the atmosphere. So I know sometimes, Dr. Cook, people hear about meteor showers or we're alerted to go out and watch one. How is that different or the same as what happened on Wednesday? Um, well, what hit us yet Wednesday was a sporadic meteor. It was part of the background. Uh, there are always meteoroids and meteors out in space, but every now and then the Earth runs into a stream of debris produced by a comet or asteroid, and that produces meteor showers. And, you know, they're visually spectacular, but meteor shower meteors never usually make it to the ground. So... Um, it's the the background meteors from asteroids that, you know, can make it to the ground and produce meteorites. So the good news is you can go outside and look at the Ada Aquarid meteor shower, which peaks on the night of May 5th, or the Perseids, which peak in mid-August, and not worry about getting bonked on the head. Well, that is good to know, because I feel like there is that little bit of like, <gasps> You know, the chicken little, the sky is falling, and so many Mississippians really thought that, you know, Wednesday morning. And, of course, now with social media and everything catching viral, everyone's interest was really peaked. But I think it's cool. It just gets people talking, Dr. Cook, about space and all the neat stuff up there. I'm sure you have had inundated with calls you normally wouldn't um, have gotten. So is it exciting to see people interested in what you do every single day? Yeah, it, 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 it can get lively when we have a bright fireball over the U.S. The only thing about yesterday's is that I wish it didn't happen when I was eating breakfast. You know? <laughs> Did your phone blow up, Dr. Cook? Yes, it does. I can only imagine uh, what that feels like. And you're you're sitting there saying, stay calm. It's going to be okay. Everything is fine. And then we're crying over here that the sky is sort of falling. Well, Dr. Cook, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, chat with us here on Good Things and share with us a little bit more about it. I will go home and look at my 90-pound dog differently today and just realize what she could do at the speed of, what, 55,000 miles per hour? (laughs) Yeah, I don't think your dog would like traveling that fast. No, I don't think at all. Andy and Jackson says it would leave a mark, though, if it hit you. Yeah, my dog would leave a mark on you if she was traveling uh, that fast. Although she feels like, Dr. Cook, she's running that fast after squirrels and other animals through the backyard. But she hadn't she hadn't topped that speed yet. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. But I also thank you for your time. I find it fascinating and always up to learning something new about what's going on in the sky. So thank you. You're more than welcome. Call us anytime. How neat is that? Something that could be 90 pounds moving at that kind of speed would create that 
big of a explosion and event. Um, and that's one good thing I think about you know social media and smartphones is that you do get to capture these kind of things.